hand, right? So we're ready. Mm -hmm. We good? Killer. All right, guys. So today is our final class in our top side control semester. So before I get to showing anything that I have chosen to show you guys today, um, as is tradition with every last class of a semester, I always open the floor for Q&A in case anybody who's been here for the content has having trouble making this or that work from the semester, or you know maybe there's something I didn't address in you know, during my semester, specific problems you're running into, I get on top inside control and this happens and so on and so forth. So I open the floor to you guys. Does anybody have anything that they want to troubleshoot, any problems they've run into in top side control? Certain again, ways that they escape, or I try to do this submission and it doesn't work, blah, 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 blah. So I'll open the floor. Does anybody have anything? Yes. Yes. So when when you get the the windshield windshield and then you slide the the knee chin uh -huh. so what position to put your chin on the hand? great question so here's what you want to think about right let's see how should mm -hmm. i handle you yeah let me get your head facing to you actually head facing. excellent yes, thank you. perfect so when i do a shin pin the dynamic i want to create is i want their arm to be pinned flat number one meaning that i do not want their elbow to be able to bend and hug so the first mistake people make is they put their shin on the bicep or the elbow, right? So they'll go like here. Yeah. What happens is he hugs around my thigh. If he hugs over my shoulder, okay. and Jimmy, you just start doing big bridges to the left, right? He can actually roll me over from here, which, frankly speaking, is a pretty stupid way to get re-rolled. I mean, there's some not entirely stupid ways to get yourself re-rolled, but that's pretty embarrassing. You get re-rolled with me, your own me. shin. With your that's why I yeah. asked. Yeah, right. You're like, like, thank you. Yeah. So I don't want my knee high on the elbow or on the bicep. Okay. I also don't want my shin way too low on the wrist. There is one exception to this, which is that if I can drift all the way out here, if I have everything I have totally pinned, I can go down here and I have my wrist lock right there. But generally speaking, if I'm really low here, the big thing, we actually didn't talk about this when we did the shin pin, so it's kind of my fault, is what you're going to do, Jim, is you're going to do a big bridge into me and you're going to try to pull your right arm right behind you. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah, big bridge, big pulse. Right. That's what they're going to do, and that's yeah. probably what happened, right? Yeah. Because he has to retract that shoulder. So there's two things that we're going to do to account for that. Number one is my shin is going to go right about the meat of the forearm, right? So not low on the bones, not at the joint of the elbow, right in that nice meaty nook. This is also cool because you can be like kind of a dick about this and yeah. make that really uncomfortable. With your training partners, obviously, be decent, but... You know, in a tournament, man, you might just get something to tap from that. Um, I'm here. And then the other thing that I want to make sure that I'm doing is I have my head control, and I almost want to think about, like, bringing his head farther away from his arm, right? So I'm almost, like, prying him apart. So when Jimmy, you try to bridge and take that arm back, no. it's like, you kind of can't get the pop you need, right? Mm -hmm. The other thing, too, is let's say he starts, so you see how his elbow's kind of inching in? So let's mm -hmm. say it starts inching. I can transfer. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's worse. Right? So now it's like, I mean, I can do this here, I can do both, right? But ultimately what I'm trying to think about doing is pinning and separating, Separate. right? So the big thing I want is that this arm needs to be completely immobilized, right? I want him to not be able to make big dramatic movements. The other thing to think about is, so let's just say, uh, I'll, let's say I don't have it. Real fast. So, like, I'll get this arm out of position, but I just want to isolate something different. Okay. I'll just chill here, right, for a second. Do a big bridge in please. Big bridge. Right. Cool. I don't even regard. I just want you to do a big bridge in Big bridge in Right. Go back. Okay. Do a big bridge in Good. Okay. Right. So, if I keep his face turned away from me, his bridge is going to be beaten. We go back to head displacement. Right? <laughs> Sorry. So as long as I have his face looking away, if he tries to bridge into me, it's very difficult. Yeah, the second that he can look to the ceiling, big bridge into me, he can move. Mm -hmm. So, all in all, if I get you back down, Jim. I'm here, you have this frames. Ushu. Grip. Slide. And I want almost like the back of his knuckles to hit the floor. That's what I kind of know is right. Catch the head and then start wrenching your shoulder pressure. Like get the face turning away. You can even block the hip here 
So at this point, if you start trying to do big dramatic bridges and stuff, right, it's pretty immobilizing. And at this point, for you, this is where catching that rest would be a good idea. Or again, they'll start reacting. You can see his frame starts coming in. Yeah. So if you want to get on top of Jim, okay. So in side control. You have to pinch the knees together, push, push you on the inside, and then right over sort of the meat of the forearm, right? And then I'm going to move your shin back, just so move this back just a hair. Cool. Yeah, nice. Now grab his head and shoulder pressure and make him look away hard. Yeah. And be very heavy on your left shoulder. So Jim, try to move around a little bit. Does that feel different? Yeah. Yeah. And then right, you can check the hip right there. And then at this point, he'll start falling down the causal chain, like, okay, Right, he's gonna frame that forearm, he start attacking that arm, exactly, in per so on Thank and so you. forth. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. And then you can beat up Jim. There Thank you. you. Killer, no problem. Um, let's see, does anybody have anything else they want to troubleshoot? Top side control? Problems they run into? No? Um, Tony? The reverse uh, katana, whatever. Reverse it's casing katana. Yes, yes. Yeah. High and low. Escaping. <laughs> Escaping from bottom or? Yeah. Mm. Well, we are supposed to be focusing on top side control, <laughs> but I will give you something and then we'll we'll drill those two things and if we have time, I'll show one other thing. So, reverse case of Katami. First, I'll show you the stupid one. He sits here, so take this arm, swing it over my body and sit to this hip facing my feet. This way, this way. Take this arm and go over this way, over my head to loosen up, and then sit to your head. Perfect, okay. The higher up he gets on my chest, so scoot up towards the head, right? The worse I'm in because my arms get out of uh, position, mm -hmm. okay? So the first battle is to just not let them get that far, right? Can you see what I'm doing there? Mm -hmm. I'll rotate this way a little. The first battle is to not let them get this far. So I'm going to show you the stupid one. But you have, like, long arms, so I think this will work for you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reach up, and I'm going to cross-face him right here. Okay, yeah, it's pretty hard. Sometimes, if they're really, uh, so go to that position. Yep. Sometimes if they're really not paying attention, you can catch a running choke right there. But the key is, honestly, the more reliably, notch of the forearm, or notch of the wrist, turn the face and take them over. Active shoulders, just like you were in bottom now. Yeah. Now, alternatively, if I'm trying to be conservative, and this is like this is an old trick. So what I'm going to do is, the big thing I have to worry about here, by the way, positionally, is the mount, right? So I want to scoop down, and when I scoop down, what I'm going to do is put the points of my elbows behind his back. So if he tries to scoot into me, he's just going to scoot into like these yeah, blades, brain, oh, right? Bone. From here, I have a lot of different options. Probably the easiest, like the simplest transition is going to be, I'm going to reach with this hand for his belt and whip this bottom hand behind me and start coming up. He's gonna think he can beat me to my back, so he's gonna start trying to go there. So as he starts trying to go, I pull his belt and I win the scramble. He thinks he has the beat on the scramble, but he doesn't because my hips are technically behind his hips. So uh, I'm gonna get you out of here. Um, Tony, I still grab you. Yeah, so number one, number one is we're here, right? So if you're way, way high, I have to do something. This is pretty much like, if you're this high up on my shoulders or on my chest, I'm pretty much beaten at this point, right? So I have to start shimmying down a little, right? Just this is enough. The first option is I catch your face and take you over, right? Pretty straightforward. Sometimes, sometimes if you're lucky, catch and you can slice yeah nice little choke right there that one's pretty low percentage alternatively if i'm trying to be kind of conservative about it i scoop down and then i put a point to my elbows here so if you try to scoot back right you're just like <laughs> stabbing yourself in the ribs yeah, right so. and then from here this top arm is going for the belt while this bottom arm comes up to my elbow you're gonna think right you have the scramble gotcha but see, like, you see what I'm saying? Like, my hips are behind your hips. Yep. So it's sort of an illusion of... I can't just jump over and get on top. It's exactly. Not... And even if you try to step over the mount, it's like, once I put your face to the floor, you can just scoop your legs out. Right. Does that make sense? Yep. Thank you. Does that make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. Let's play around with those two things. Pinning the forearm, uh, and just play around with, like, your opponent trying to bridge and retract that arm. 
and then play around with those reverse keys to get Tommy escapes. Alright, let's find out. What you think?